Anna Loveman drives hours to attend military events like this. She doesn't want her son Kyle Sinclair to be forgotten. He was so good with kids. I mean, he would have been a great dad. CBC News obtained a Board of Inquiry report into his death. It found that in 2014, Sinclair was ordered to fix a seatbelt inside a Coyote armored vehicle. He pulled a lever to raise the driver's seat. The seat shot upward, pinning him at the neck against the roof of the vehicle, crushing his windpipe. He was all alone with no way to escape. Later in hospital, his mother made the difficult decision to take him off life support. You're almost numb, like you just don't really think that this is really happening. And then when you see the straight line, you go, okay, it did, so. The president of the Board of Inquiry calls Sinclair's death needless. I thought a good, a good young man had passed away in fairly awful circumstances and uh, it didn't need to happen. The inquiry revealed that another member of the military died in the same way as Sinclair back in 1999. Changes to the driver's seat were recommended back then to eliminate the threat. The Army decided against that, saying those changes would compromise soldiers' protection from shrapnel and bullets. That decision directly uh, affected or caused, in the end, the, uh, the death of uh, Craftsman Sinclair. Perron says that decision was made by the brigade commander, who at the time was Andrew Leslie, now a Liberal Member of Parliament. Leslie has declined CBC's request for an interview. The Army has since replaced the hazardous seats in all its coyotes, except for five stationed in Latvia. We've learned from it, um, and we're safer today than we were yesterday. Ashley Burke, CBC News, CFB Petawawa.